Hello everyone and welcome back to Timberborn. This is episode 4 of the Badlands Plains Challenge. Before I highlight the last episode, it is the beginning of a bad tide and we actually just had a big update that dropped. It was listed as a small update, but it changes the way that water and bad water can irrigate and impact the environment. Based on what I was reading, it looks like that this dam system that we set up over here is actually not going to be effective in preventing bad water from spreading over the land. I think that we're going to lose some of these trees and crops along the water's edge, but thankfully we have a water dump which should keep some of the trees and crops on the inside alive. We are going to switch all of these farmers to harvesting because there is not really going to be any point in replanting these crops. And we have our first bad water pump that is starting to go. And as the bad water mixes, this efficiency will go up. You can see some of the contamination is spreading through here. And it's not being stopped by the levees, which I just assembled last episode. And the same thing is happening over here. We're going to start losing some trees. We do have a lot of food, and then we also set up some more tree planting areas over here. I also just unplanted all of these because they end up dying during the bad tide anyways. Now that some of the trees and plants have died off, we can actually recap what we did in the last episode. We got quite a bit done. We expanded our water storage and our power production with these engines. We also set up these hydroponic gardens and it looks like the mushrooms are actually getting pretty close to being completed. And with this fermenter, we can turn four raw mushrooms into 16 fermented mushrooms. We also set up this number cruncher and this gets us 10 science every hour. This costs 1500 science to unlock in the first place. So we will be earning that science back pretty quickly. We also built the first bad water pump and as you can see, these two small tanks are already full of bad water, so we need to get this one constructed. And lastly, we tried to get the beaver's well-being up by building some rooftop terraces and some more campfires. We didn't do very well because the beaver's well-being is currently at 11. So we will continue to try and bump that up this episode by getting more aesthetics and entertainment set up for them, as well as hopefully getting some better food. Now that we have three fermenters and we also have a food factory built, that should help in diversifying their food sources. Now that we can't place any crops right here since the bad water will inevitably destroy them, this actually opens up some more space for putting in a couple engines. Because right now we're only running at 97% efficiency and we do want to put in a few more buildings and so that means that we need to get some more power. And after the bad tide passes I do want to put in these couple other water wheels but the problem is you can't rely on water wheels during the droughts. And so getting some engines put in will be a good way to have some backup power. Oh my gosh, I just realized that this whole time this is only a double shaft and not a triple. So this power is actually not contributing to anything. So <laughs> let's replace this right now before I block it off. The next thing that I do want to start constructing is this explosives factory and this takes bad water which we now have 170 of so let's get this unlocked this is a perfect place to put the explosives factory although when i stop this the number cruncher fermenter and oil press will all stop working so i need to make sure that i have enough materials for this i don't currently have enough gears or metal blocks so we're gonna wait until we have some more of those Oh, it looks like we have a bunch of mushrooms and have they started fermenting them yet? They have, kind of. There's one. Oh, did the mushrooms all get collected? Okay, there are no mushrooms left and there's no fermented mushrooms. So maybe they just processed them all and ate them immediately. You guys can probably go back and take a look because I just absolutely missed that. Now that we can't place any crops right here. If that's the case, I'm going to need to get another hydroponic garden that is making mushrooms because it's only been a couple days since the mushrooms are ready to be harvested. So it looks like only half the beavers are getting access to a campfire and then not many roof or shrub. So let's get those things. Awesome, we got the beavers well being up to 16. We did place in a few campfires and aesthetic pieces, so it looks like that did the trick. But we're not done there yet. We're going to keep placing some more stuff throughout the episode. 
and I'm looking at our resources and we are going up in gears and metal blocks. Plus we have no mushrooms and we have plenty of canola oil stacked up. So I think that it's gonna be okay if we disconnect this right now. And we'll get this placed as quickly as possible. Uh-oh, I just noticed that we have a contaminated beaver. Oh, here it is. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's take a look at this guy. Contamination brings him down by 10. So I guess it eliminates all the bonuses except for these basic ones. Oh, so the movement speed goes down by 70% and they refuse to work. Okay, well, we should definitely try and decontaminate them. So the decontamination pod, it takes some metal blocks, planks, and extract so we need to get the centrifuge which is right here which also takes metal blocks we don't have any metal blocks right now so i'm thinking we should probably build a second smelter and that takes gears which we are making some gears so we should have just about all the resources in order to make the smelter which should help get the explosives factory built quicker and then it'll allow us to get some more metal blocks in order to make a centrifuge but we are also going to start setting up another gear workshop since this only takes logs and planks and we have plenty of both of those look at that they got these two buildings completed in no time and this one's going to get constructed tomorrow since it has all the resources oh and we have all the algae stored up in here so we can actually start doing this use the food factory to get algae canola oil and fuel into some algae rations although unfortunately it looks like this doesn't start working until some of these algae get cleared out it might even take all the algae getting removed for it to start up again that means we should probably get some more storage set up oh my gosh this already made 105 algae rations and they are almost full wow that goes quarter of an hour that is so fast it still isn't quite cleared out but we did get some storage built but i forgot to put the pads in now i did so we should be able to put some raw algae in here and then the algae rations over here now i want to test out this exercise plaza and let's get that unlocked Ooh, that is a little bit bigger than i was expecting let's get rid of some of these berry bushes over here Okay, we have just enough space for it. Since we have a decent amount of wood and planks, I think we're gonna try and build platform area over here. That way we can have access to this grid right here and get the centrifuge placed because it looks like it takes power and it actually has a decent sized footprint. But right now there's not anywhere that I can place it without getting rid of some buildings. It has been a few days and we've got quite a bit done. We got the exercise plaza set up as well as we got the centrifuge complete. They're starting to make some extract which is getting us one step closer to decontaminating that lazy beaver. There is also a drought incoming and so we gotta get ready for that. Store up some water. I would make some more water storage but we are very low on planks right now. You can see there's a baby leading the exercise class over here getting a good sweat on. And with some of these additions, our beaver's well-being has gone up to 18. And we're not even done yet. We still have a few more things that I want to put in. So as I'm looking through their well-being, I notice that a lot of these are dipping a bit. And I don't think it's that they don't have access to it. I think it's that they don't have enough time. Although I don't really want to change the working hours too much lower than 16. I might bump it down a little bit, but I think that it means we need to start looking at getting some bots. And all the bot factories and assemblers take power, and since I kind of boxed myself in with having this small area, we're going to continue the idea of expanding the production area to this direction. And so we'll get probably this whole area filled up with buildings that require power since I can tie them in directly via this centrifuge. And we have enough science that we can get this bot part factory unlocked and place the first couple right here. I'm also hoping that this shaft will actually connect this centrifuge to all this stuff over here because if it doesn't then I'm in trouble. Although actually I can connect it back this way. So I should really just set that up. Since if this doesn't work going over this way and I've built this already, I'll have to disassemble it in order to get these two things built. We're going to try dropping the working hours by two hours and see if that gives these beavers any more availability to hang out at some of these different places in the evenings. Oh my goodness, we have eight unemployed beavers. we got to unpause all these extra jobs. Ooh, the beavers well being pumped up and I don't think that I actually made any adjustments other than the time that they work. 
It also looks like I need to get some more engines set up because when there's not water flowing, we're actually not running at full capacity. Oh no. They've built this. Wait. Oh, they can make it from underneath. Thankfully, I got this one built just in time. It is day one of cycle eight and the drought has officially ended. We got a couple of the bot part factories set up and we actually have a homeless beaver. So we can start expanding our housing situation. And we're gonna try using some of these row houses because these are the perfect size that we can actually fit another rooftop terrace on top of them. And while we were at less than full capacity, I got rid of these two water storage tanks so that we can get a couple of these large tanks. And these guys are big. They can hold a whopping 1,200 units of water. Oh, we are actually running a little bit low on wood right now. I just paused the third lumber mill that I created during the drought since we were running a little bit short on planks, but now we're doing pretty good. So I don't think we need that. And then I have some more trees getting planted over here as well as I added a lumberjack flag up here to try and get some of this dead wood. We are finally getting ready to make a decontamination pod. We still have an affected beaver. I've seen online that these decontamination pods don't actually work very quickly, but I haven't used one yet, so we're gonna see how it goes. We'll see if we can decontaminate this unlucky beaver. Okay, we have a couple things. We got this bot assembler, and now they're just waiting on bot chassis and bot heads in order to start making the golems. And we have this decontamination pod, which is cleaning this sick beaver. Oh wow, looks like this bot is 99% complete, which means in the morning, they should be ready to start working. Oh, I don't know where he just went. He slipped away. There he is. He's just hanging out. Since we're running a little bit short on metal blocks, let's unlock this for a thousand science and get the bot working in there. This is also one of the more dangerous jobs and it causes beavers to get injured like these two who are wandering. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of them that are injured. We'll set up a string of medical beds over here and prioritize a couple of them at least. We got the first charging station ready to go and the contaminated beaver is making his way back to the decontamination pod. I don't know how you can check if it's making any progress or not. He spent several days here, but I guess we'll just see how long it takes. Now I just realized that 192 hours, well that might be eight days, we don't actually work 24 hours. So it'll probably be closer to double that, which means that we definitely need to get another hydroponic garden set up. Oh, the bad tide has started. Let's pause that real quick because we need to raise all these floodgates. Wow, they built that quickly. We gotta get a path set up. We have some more unemployed beavers and we are actually pretty much occupying every job that's available. So we're gonna get a second hauling post set up and this will be one of the filler jobs. Whoa, this is a popular spot. You can see even one of the haulers is doing some nice beaver exercise. Since every building is currently running at only 84% efficiency in terms of power, I'm building a couple engines to help deal with this. So far the bad tides haven't actually been too impactful. It did reduce our area that we could plant crops and trees, although we still get some power out of it since the bad tide just pushes through the water wheels. So it's been much better than I was expecting it to be. I was thinking that everything along here would die but I'm happy to say that I was actually wrong about that. The final piece of metal was put in place and now we're just waiting for morning for this to get assembled. Oh, I think the worker beaver is gonna come and finish it off. I was worried it wasn't connected since it's not spinning, but there is no wood in there. The bad tide has ended and soon we can turn on all these water pumps. Although I'm looking at it and there are 15 incapacitated beavers. I think part of that is the working conditions because some of these buildings are more dangerous than others. Like right there, you can see a beaver just got injured. Oh my gosh, we have 11 contaminated beavers. Ah, oh, shoot. I'm trying to figure out how they got exposed to the bad water. Oh, great. Well, I don't know exactly what it is. I'm not sure if it's because they're working in here and that is what exposes them to it. We're at 12 contaminated adults. We need to get some more of these up. Okay, we just got one more contaminated adult. I have no idea how they got contaminated. 16, they are getting contaminated from somewhere. Well, our population has been booming. We need some more housing. If you were able to spot how the beavers got contaminated, please let me know. 
because this is not going to be sustainable if 16 bots get contaminated every bad tide. And just as I was saying, the bad tides weren't that bad. Well, I think we are just in time with getting some bots created because it seems like these beavers are not going to be working quite as well. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like and a comment, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Adios.